Well, hello, friends. Tony Howard here with Astrology University, and I'd like to invite you to our next summit, Astrology and Relationships, Exploring Our Connections. The summit will be presented April 25th and 26th, 2020. It is free to watch live, and I have one of our great speakers with us here today to tell you a little bit more about the summit and what he's going to be sharing with you. Uh, hey, Mark. This is Mark Jones uh, from Wales. Thanks for joining me today, Mark. My pleasure, Tony. Always nice to see you, pal. Um, well, yeah, this is a subject, I think, close to all of our hearts, really, in a sense. When you deal with relationships, you're dealing about one of the great prime human motivations, aren't you? I always say the cardinal cross in astrology, Aries, Libra, Cancer, Capricorn, is really what anyone who comes for a reading asks about. They're either asking about themselves, Aries, or their relationships, Libra, or their family or childhood or where they came from, Cancer, or what to do in the world, Capricorn. And of course, our relationships with other people, I think is one of the great sort of redemptive areas of human experience. And maybe especially important in this kind of time when, frankly, other than the ones you live with, you're not seeing people so much. And, you know, for years I was a therapist, Tony, as well as an astrologer, and I used to work with people who were going to see couples therapists and I used to work with the individuals who were telling me the kinds of things they weren't telling the couples therapist and I got it down at one point and I just said like the, the thing that makes a relationship work the engine of a relationship is there enough love is there enough love in a relationship to overcome the obstacles or isn't there and I remember once this lady I worked with and I she was talking about how she left her husband years ago and she'd gone back to him and now she wasn't sure what to do and I leaned forward and I said do you still love him? And she said, no. And that was a single session therapy. She then rang me the next week, canceled the next session. She had moved hundreds of miles away and was living with her mother. You know, it, it takes that realization to realize whether the relationship still has energy. And I think when we look at that kind of love astrologically, relationships in the personal magnetism sense, we're looking at Venus. But when we're talking about idealized or deeper yearning or higher love we're talking about the symbolism of neptune and venus rules both taurus and libra the second house and the seventh house if you like from aries as the first on the ascendant and they form a natural inconjunct the crisis between how i feel about myself taurus and how i project or feel about others libra and then libra makes an inconjunct to pisces ruled in modern astrology by neptune and really in that yod, Taurus, Pisces to Libra, we have the essence of the idealization of human love. You know, how I feel about myself, how I feel about others, Taurus to Libra, and then how I feel about the whole idea of love or the whole ideal of the ideal, the idealized partner, the person I dream of, Neptune, and how they come into my life. And I love to explore this with people in their charts, you know, how to look at the symbolism of the second, seventh and twelfth houses, or just the idea that Rudyard presented in his work that personal inner planets have a higher octave in the outer planets. If you're interested in modern astrology, you're interested in the outer planets, just constantly time and time again, I see these big changes in people's lives when outer planets interact with personal planets or inner planets. And Neptune being the higher octave of Venus, this idea that personal human magnetism and love is in fact potentially elevated by this divine quality or terribly deluded by the, the expectation or fantasy of that quality being there. But that never not. happens. That famous love is blind. <laughs> yeah. <Right. laughs> And your talk, I, Mark, is called yes. A Higher Love, Neptune as yes. the Higher Octave of Venus. And you'll yes. be presenting that on, uh, you're actually going to be kicking off the summit now on Saturday, the 25th, Great. April 25th at 9 a.m. Great. Well, and how, how exciting and what a privilege to lead forward. And, and maybe a nice thing to lead forward with that higher intention, because as we both know, frequently in the day-to-day -day maelstrom of human relationships, the ideal, the higher love can seem to disappear. And it can seem sometimes like people are on the edge of leaving each other. And then sometimes that greater love kickstarts again, like the engine revs up again and it changes everything. And in that sense, it truly is a miracle. The miracle of human love does 
redeem people's relationships. It does bring a higher sense of purpose to their life. And I wonder sometimes as a good Pisces, if real genuine love is possible without a degree of sacrifice to the other person, you know? And That's then, a good question. Yeah, yeah. And then you're basically the person you end up with long-term, you're basically saying, who am I prepared to make those sacrifices to? Right. Like somewhere in life that's going to be asked of me, is this person worth it? And um, I think- and the, and the way you ask yeah. that question brings yes. in Venus, right? Is, yes. this, is this worth yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the value, the value, the value that comes it, yeah. and it's the relationship of that value to that love. And if there is no reflection, Libra, of the original value Taurus, there's no reflection of that higher love or that, that just hint of greater redemptive love. Really like a mother with a child, you know, you get up and you tend this child or, or in a way it's better to assess your relationship when you're sick. How does your partner treat you? When you disappoint them, how does your partner treat you? Because it's easy to be in love in the good times. It's easy when it's party mode and you're in the honeymoon period to feel that sense. But you get a much more realistic assessment of the degree of love and value when it's not so easy. And that's obviously challenging for people. And I think it's, it's super interesting to explore that in one's own life is there sufficient love there to elevate it? And can one remind oneself of it by exploring it? Because sometimes it does pay to remind ourselves of that. Sometimes we need conscious motivation. Sometimes I have to remind myself that my wife and child truly are deserving of my energy when I'm tired, <laughs> you know? You do have to do that to, to be almost a better, you know, to be becoming a better person. Right. Beautiful. It sounds like a lot of good stuff uh, for folks. So thanks definitely for, for being one of the speakers at the summit. And folks, if you would like to tune in, as I said earlier, it is free to watch live. So if you're intrigued by what Mark has just been saying and want to hear him uh, say a bit more about that, um, tune in April 25th at 9 a.m. Pacific time for Mark's talk. And then there will be 11 other amazing astrologers presenting talks on the same subject, astrology, exploring our connections. And uh, all you have to do to sign up is head over to astrologyuniversity.com forward slash summit and pop in your email address. So it's pretty simple to sign up and uh, we'll send you all the instructions about how to watch the summit live. If for some reason you can't tune in live or you're watching this particular interview uh, after those dates, no worries. We've recorded the summit and you can purchase the all access pass. Also, if you would just like to support our mission of keeping this astro astrology summit free to watch live for those who can't afford to attend, um, then your purchase of the All Access Pass helps us do that, as well as directly supports all of the amazing speakers who are presenting for you over the weekend. Um, and you'll find all the details about that on the website as well. But head over to astrologyuniversity.com forward slash summit. We would love to see you uh, join us. And thanks so much, so, thanks so much, Mark, for joining us today. Um, oh, my just, pleasure. Yeah. And, uh, and we'll see you all very soon at the summit. And we'll see you again really soon too, Mark. Thanks so much. My pleasure.